I'm like a bewitched. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. Today I'm here to share with you two of my favorite visual and hands-on place value activities. It has been a little bit of a crazy week. I started my week off with the flu. Oh. It's been like five years since I've had the flu, and let me tell you, this thing laid me out for at least three days. I could not even move out of bed, but you know what? I am back, I am here for my Sunday Spotlight, and I'm excited to share some fun stuff with you about place value. I also have a few exciting things happening in my personal life, which I will share a little bit about in the weeks coming. Before I dive into this video, I do want to let you know that while these are two of my favorite hands-on and visual place value activities, there is another one that I love. It is called Aeropaths. I already made an entire video dedicated to it, so I'm not going to talk about it here. And that one is for students to understand place value on a 120 chart. So I'm going to put that card up here and I'll actually link that video in the description. And if you haven't seen it, you should check that one out after this. Let's go. The first activity is one that I cannot take credit for at all. It is something that I did in my very first classroom way back in 2011. And I learned it from the teacher tipster. Now he was like the first YouTube teaching channel I've ever, ever seen. I think I watched him when I was still in college. And I don't know if he's still around making new videos, but you can definitely find his videos still on YouTube today. I'm going to go ahead and link him in the description. He is just a I think he was a first grade teacher. And he just has all these like fun activities and ideas and songs that he would sing with his class and it always just excited me when I was doing my student teachings. So I wanted to give him a quick shout out before I share this idea. He had this video about place value boot camp which is something I just thought was so much fun and such a fun visual way to introduce place value to your kids. So this is something like I said I started doing in my very first first grade classroom and it's something that continued throughout my years of teaching. I'm going to go ahead and share the song that he created for Place Value Bootcamp, and I did change a little bit, which I'll share with you. So basically, as you sing this song to your students, it is a way to get them to understand that, you know, tens are tall, ones are small, just a visual representation of tens and ones before we dive into Place Value. You'll recognize this chant, and it is one that you sing, and then your students repeat the exact phrase after you. This is how it goes. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Tens are tall and ones are small. Tens are tall and ones are small. First you count up all the tens. And so during this part is actually I would have students come up and they would stand up and be my tens. So when I say, first you count up all the tens, we would pause and count 10, 20, 30, however many students are standing up. And then the last part is, Add all the little ones to the end. 31, 32, 33. And what I'm doing there is I would have students stand up and be the tens, so they would stand up really tall, and then my ones would crouch down really small, so they'd be crouched down on the floor next to them. So as we're kind of singing this song and practicing it, it's that quick, just like that, just those four lines, and I would have my students chant it, I would call different students up, I'd point to them and say, okay, you stand here, you're tall, you're tall, you're tall, you're small, you're small. And I would have them kind of get down and I would treat it like a boot camp. I mean, I wasn't like, you know, mean or angry, but we would act like it was a boot camp. We'd really get into it and have a lot of fun. So if I called four students up and said they are tall, they're gonna represent 40. And then if I called three students up to be small and they would crouch down, it would be 43. And so when introducing place value and singing that chant, counting it along 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, it would just get students, like I said, practicing, counting up those tens first and then moving on to the ones. I'll go ahead and insert some old pictures I have of doing this place value boot camp in my classroom in Las Vegas, but actually a teacher friend and I, we would go outside to do this when the weather was nice and I would have my students bring a little whiteboard. And so they would bring a whiteboard and a marker and we would sit outside, we'd chant our song nice and loud, we'd have bunches of kids come up, practice being tens and ones, and then the students that were not standing would all go ahead and try to write down what numbers we were representing with our bodies on the whiteboard. 
then they would just flip it and we could see if they were correct. Just get a real quick check in on who was grasping this concept quickly and who might need a little bit more work. After we had practiced the song a few times and students were using their bodies to represent these different numbers, what we would do then is we would transfer into, so I would either do this the next day or if I had an extended math block, I would do it on the same day actually, but we would do a place value hunt or a read the room, whatever you want to call it. But we would put a little twist on it to keep the boot camp aspect. Each of the cards, I'll insert a slide here, had um, tens and ones and students would have a sheet they'd have to go around and instead of just having the numbers when you do like a search the room or a word hunt sometimes you just paste the numbers on the wall or tape them up but for this one I would actually go ahead and take a post-it and cover it and I did this because you couldn't see what was behind it so I had plenty of numbers for students to go ahead search for count up the tens and the ones and write it down on the recording sheet but then there were six that had exercises for like a boot camp type activity. It was a really fun way since students were up, they were running around and they would do this with a partner. And it was just a fun way to, you know, do 10 jumping jacks or try to do five push-ups and add a little activity into their place value hunt. This place value hunt is something I have had over on my blog for years now. So I will go ahead and share that down in the description below in case you wanted to grab it. The next activity is one that I have in my place value hands-on activity unit and this one is great for students to really get a feel and get their hands on those numbers. Instead of just looking at pictures of base 10 blocks and counting up the tens and ones, this is where students are going to really get a feel for all sorts of numbers and actually group them themselves by tens and then count up how many they have. And this activity is called scoop and group. When doing an activity like scoop and group, it is very simple to prep. All you're going to do is you're going to need some sort of bucket or tub and a bunch of small little manipulatives. This is just one little bag I just grabbed. Um, I like to use something small. You could use beans, you could use beads, you could use, that's a lot of bee things, beans, beads, buttons, anything that's small they can get their hands on. This is one of those activities that if you change out the manipulatives and you change out the tools students are using, it just continues to be fun for them while they practice place value. So I would actually store these in a little sand pail. You can grab those so easily from the dollar store and with a little shovel and a pail. So I would actually store all these buttons in a pail and partners would go ahead and they would take their shovel, so this would be their tool for the day. They would go ahead and scoop out some of those buttons. They would each get one scoop and they would see how many they could get and dump it on a mat. In my unit, I have a mat that looks like this. If you can see, it has one, two, three, four, five circles, and then it says leftovers here. But even though this is included in my unit, I'm sharing this activity because you could so easily grab a piece of paper, draw five circles, and a little leftover spot. You don't necessarily need this, but this is in my unit if you want it. After they've gone ahead and scooped out their items, these circles are for the students to individually count groups of 10 first. They're gonna see how many groups of 10 they can make. So they will go ahead and every time they get a group of 10, they will put it inside the circles. And then these are their leftovers. So what students will do is they'll each get a turn to scoop, group, count up how many they have, maybe 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, let's say. And this way, as you're going around, you can see who's really grouping them right, who's counting the tens first, and then adding the ones. It's a good way to check in with your students. And then they'll compare and see which student got the higher number. Scoop and group is a very easy activity, but like I said, as you continue to switch up those manipulatives and make things a little more fun for the students to really scoop, they have those really cool, um, like they kind of look like scissors, but it's a ball and you can scoop from it. I'm not doing a good job explaining this, but I'm gonna insert a picture here. But those would be a lot of fun for students to scoop up and try to get as many as they can inside there and then count them out. But like I said, as long as you switch up those tools, this type of math center can be used over and over and the kids still love it. As always, everything I did mention in my video today will be listed in the description. So if there's something you want, go ahead and check down there. I hope you enjoyed my two place value activities. And if you're practicing place value in the classroom, I hope you can take these activities or maybe even use them in a small group or whole group with your whole class. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you hit subscribe and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new week's video. See you next Sunday. Bye. Okay, I think that's it.